I brought this coffee cup. Now, I don't drink coffee, but uh, I think it was Wade brought this in, but uh, it's been on my desk, and I just looked at it, and, I, and it made me smile. It's been there a while. And the two most common questions that are asked of, of, of a minister, if someone doesn't know or, or uh, specifically knows who you are or whatever, the first one, and it just says it right on the front uh, with, a, with a big heart on it, the same thing on either side, it says, yes, I'm a pastor. And the other answer to the question is, no, the last sermon was not specifically about you. <laughs> and so I just, uh, I just enjoyed uh, looking at that today. I just, it's been there a while, but uh, I just looked at it again. Sometimes things are like that. They just uh, they take you, and that was, it was neat. So, um, yeah, certainly the praise God for our service the other night at the old church and, and all involved. Uh, just to recap on that, that was very special. And, uh, Praise God for that. Prayer vigil, which is coming up on Thursday, uh, the sheet is out there, and I always urge that we all sign up to pray. Now, you don't have to be physically present here, but it is really nice to be able to put your name down and, and to know, and uh, even if for some reason somebody has already signed on a time slot out there, and that's the only time slot, uh, you can sign there as well, but um, just because you're not going to be physically present here during a specific time slot. And as you know, there is a, an area on the clock where we don't come to the church, basically because it's hours of the day that's not exactly uh, conducive to safety, uh, you know, for, for some. So, uh, but please uh, write that down. It is super important. Prayer is super important. Um, be a part of the prayer vigils. That, I think it's a yellow sheet out there. There's a pen there. Just wanted to stress that this morning, okay? As we look at the scriptures today, if you look at the old uh, cover of the bulletin, the truth, okay? Remember that show on TV, um, To Tell the Truth? I mean, I used to watch it with Dan and Grandma. Uh, they, I think they've had updated versions of them and lost track, but it was kind of interesting. And I remember one time we had a, um, a show we put on uh, over at the, I think it was the Ratona Grange. I, I never was part of the Grange, but I went for a special something, and they actually did that. Had like, uh, they had a panel of three, and and they would pick up something out of their junk pile at the barn or the, or the shop that looked kind of oddball, and uh, they'd pass it around, and each one would tell a story about it, and one of them was telling the truth about what it actually was. It was kind of fun, it was a, and it, was a lot, it brought a lot of laughs. I, I do know that, but um, that's kind of what it's about today. Now, 1 John uh, 1, if you look at your paper, um, your bulletin, you'll see that that's what's going on. 1 John 1, little books all the way in the back. And if, you can, if you're having trouble with it, just go back to Revelation, the last book, and leaf back a few pages, and you'll come to the first epistle of John, okay? Now, if you ever wondered, and I used to when I first started studying the Bible many years ago, this is the same John that wrote the Gospel of John. Um, he was born in AD uh, four, in other words, four four years after the uh, after Christ, and uh, he died in AD ninety eight. So you can figure out how old he was. But he's the same um, uh, guy that wrote uh, John the Beloved, as Jesus would have called him. And this epistle, uh, well, actually, the three of them are written somewhere in in AD eighty through ninety. So. Just some stuff that I dug up uh, as I started to look at these things. But chapter 1, 1 John, okay? First epistle, epistle of John, not the gospel, but the first epistle of John. That which from the beginning, in verse 1, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled concerning the word of life. Now what he's referring to there, he was actually present at the time of the crucifixion and the resurrection because he was uh, part of the original 12. The life was manifested and we have seen and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested to us. That which we have seen and heard we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son Jesus Christ. An invitation to the gospel. And these things we write to you that your joy might be full. Verse 4. Kind of a good verse to put your finger down on because 
There's a difference between, uh, spoke about it before, between being just as happy as a clam, as they might say. Um, there's a difference between being super happy and actually having joy in your heart. You can be in the toughest of circumstances, you still can have some joy in your heart if you know Jesus Christ. And the things which he's describing in this chapter uh, is, is all about how these things can bring joy to your heart. It's a sustained joy to your heart. And it's all about uh, telling the gospel, telling the truth, and exposing uh, the father uh, of all lies, which would be Satan himself. This is a message which we have heard from him and to declare you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. When we, when we visit uh, our new home and, and we're there permanently in the coming kingdom, um, there is no darkness at all, ever. Imagine that. Never gets night. Sun never goes down. Sun doesn't have to come up because the Son of God uh, gives the light uh, to the place and it is always light there. And that's one of the things that will be... Uh, really neat, but no darkness at all. If we say to him we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. So we also have a, a darkness referring to spiritual darkness as well. And um, interesting stuff. Verse 7, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sins. The only way you can be forgiven of all your sins is if you walk uh, into the light of Jesus Christ and a shower under the, under the blood of Jesus Christ and your, your sins will be forgiven. Verse 8. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. And it's easy for some maybe to say, well, I didn't sin. I've been a good boy. Uh, I didn't sin. But the Bible says that's not the case. Even one little sin, whatever uh, tiny little bit that it might be, um, is still sin and therefore has to be brought under the blood of Jesus Christ. Verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we confess them, he is faithful, okay? It isn't like, well, he's out to lunch, or he'll be back in a couple weeks. Uh, keep that in thought in mind, but he's there. And, and the minute we open our hearts and our minds and our, our souls to, to give him our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanses us. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. And I'm gonna go down to uh, two here just a little bit because it all matches in, okay? Uh, so I want you to listen to this uh, if, if you can. Chapter two, my little children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he himself is the propitiation for our sins, not for ours only, but also for the whole world went over that before with you folks. Uh, some things in this world cover a certain scope, uh, certain qualifications, uh, uh, certain geographical area, certain age, uh, certain level of education, or uh, whatever it might be, but this covers all sin, anywhere, everywhere uh, in the whole world. There's none that, that is kept away if they are willing to bring their sin to him. Now, verse 3, now by this we know, we know him if we keep his commandments. He who says, I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. And that does happen sometimes. But whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is protect, perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. He who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk just as he walked. You've heard the thing before said that uh, the greatest witness is not how eloquent you are in prayers and preaching and knowledge of the scriptures, but... How, how do you look to the people around you, your family, your friends, your neighbors, your co-workers? Are you walking as Jesus would have walked? And that's more important. It's what they see uh, is, is certainly uh, bringing it out to the people in that way. Seven, brethren, I write no new commandment to you, but an old commandment, which you have heard from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which you have heard from the beginning in verse eight. Again, a new commandment I write to you. Which then is true in him and in you, because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. The Old Testament is just full of the love your neighbor thing. Just visit Deuteronomy if you want to find a spot. Uh, and, it, and Jesus just renews it, repowers it uh, in his uh, time, and, and certainly John is picking up on that. And what, what you really like, I mean I like, is, uh, is the darkness is already passing away and the true light is already shining true light. 
He who hates says he is in the light and hates his brother is in darkness until now, and he who loves his brother abides in the light, and there is no cause for stumbling in him. Just a few more verses here. But he who hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. Twelve, I write to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven for you for his name's sake. I write to you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. And I write to you, little children, because you have known the Father. Notice who is he addressing these verses to. Children, men, fathers, and, and moms, too, uh, would be. Uh, and 14 would be the last here, okay? I have written to you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. I have written to you, young men, because you are strong and the word of God abides in you. And you have overcome the wicked one. And that's what the scripture is all about. That's what the Christian faith is all about. We can't overcome the wicked one by ourselves, but through Jesus Christ and his blood and the fellowship and his Holy Spirit, uh, we can. And that's what this is all about. This is the word of the Lord. So we bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father, we praise you again for your word, for being able to share it, to look at it, have you talk to us about it, be filled with your Holy Spirit because of it, and to be able to utilize it and take it, powered by you, powered by your spirit, out into the world so that they too could see uh, what you have put in our hearts. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Some of these things that have come to me uh, and, and as time goes by, uh, uh, it just kind of kind of brought me to the, to the scripture here and, and the world in which we live. And some of it's kind of a, um, a little bit of an offshoot from our campfire Bible study we had uh, the other night. Uh, which was very successful. We do praise God for that. And uh, But I just wanted to, uh, the other day I was listening to the news, and everybody knows there's a war going on in, in Ukraine and with, with uh, Russia. And one of the Russian soldiers defected, okay? And it was all over the, the issue of, of the nuclear power plant. <coughs> Some of you may have read this, heard this, I don't know. But they interviewed him, and of course they had to use a translator, um, but what the guy said, he, had, he was part of a special unit of some kind, uh, an assault team, and, and he was following orders, and he was loyal, and he was told uh, that um, everything you know, on their state TV is, is the truth, or they don't talk about truth, it is what it is, and everything was bad going on in Ukraine, and we needed to uh, destroy the nuclear power plant, which is equal to a detonating a nuclear weapon and with a lot of consequences. And when he got there, he didn't see any American soldiers. He didn't see any NATO soldiers, like was told to him. He didn't see any uh, aggression or any of the stuff that the, that the state-run TV had shown him. And he could not see any reason for participating in blowing up a nuclear power plant and destroying large parts of the country and certainly causing issues for a great part of Europe and perhaps even around the world with the way the air currents go and, and different things. And so he defected <clears throat> and was able to, to speak and told uh, that he had never seen the truth and he needed to see the truth. And he saw the truth and he got out. And it, that just kind of caught me uh, that to live in a country where everything is kept from you um, and you can't get out and see and feel and read and ask questions and find out for yourself what's going on. Uh, the truth is kept uh, from, um, the word is truth today. Uh, it was a little while ago, um, it was one of those old documentaries. I mean, you just flip to it and I just happened to, to catch it. I've seen them so many times, I don't even go there anymore, but I just happened to land there. And it was about those Nuremberg trials uh, when, the, when uh, the Nazis were being tried after the war. And I just caught it just a little bit. And there was one guy that they were grilling. Can't even remember the fellow's name now. And uh, the lies as they were telling them to the, to the people and to our Americans and, and how he would cover lies and cap lies and more lies. And, and it was just, uh, there was no truth to any of it, no truth to the, and they had the actual documents and the records of all the people that they had killed and annihilated and gassed. And, and uh, it wasn't anything even close to what the fellow was telling him when he was on trial. He was just willing to 
continue to tell any untruth that he needed to tell and didn't make any difference anyway, uh, the rope was ready for its neck when, when the thing was all over. To tell the truth, I did use four words in the title and I don't like to, but I just thought that would, uh, I just thought of the old TV show and, and thought I would share that with you uh, as we go. The other day, my dad came out of the house and he says, he still has an old answering machine. He says, uh, I got a call and it says, uh, my Amazon account has been uh, debited and uh, $950 worth of goods are headed for Florida and I need to do something about it. Well, he knew it wasn't right, but uh, I said, well, first of all, I said, uh, we were working on the chopper, weren't we, Zach? And, and of course he did his Jeepers thing. Uh, and I said, well, first of all, you don't have an Amazon account. Okay, okay. And I said, um, I knew you wouldn't uh, try to give anybody any money to straighten something out. And okay, okay, okay. And uh, so I went back and, and I played it. There wasn't even a number to recontact. Uh, it was the weirdest thing ever. But again, to tell an untruth, to try to get somebody in it. The paper, if you read any reports from the local news, all around, especially the Troy area, there's been people duped into giving thousands of dollars to correct an issue of whatever it might be. Um, we used to get the, the car warning things. And I looked at Tammy and I looked at the car and um, I wouldn't want to be given a warning to that thing, but if you're willing to, <laughs> if the price is cheap enough, I mean, you could guarantee me, but you know that's not gonna happen. Um, you look at some of the stuff we're driving and, um, yeah, untruth, <laughs> untruth. Jesus said, I am the way, and then he underlines the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. You've all heard that, right? Before I go any further, I'm gonna, um, I know Jeff's back there, he's taking a nap right now, but I didn't, I didn't say anything in the office, but would you come up here, Jeff, and help me out for just a little project here, okay? Uh, he's quick on his feet, so he has no, no problem with that. He's good. <laughs> so would you come up here just a minute? Now, I, I'm not up on my courtroom stuff, but I know with your legal background, you would know. Now, if somebody was setting, uh, getting ready to, to be like on the defense or whatever, and who is it? Who's the guy that hands them the Bible? Uh, usually it's a bailiff. Oh, he's calling the bailiff, yeah. okay. Now, can you tell me, uh, you know, just put your hand on it, what would you be asked to say? Uh, usually put one hand on it. Okay, hand. what would they say? Uh, do swear or affirm before Almighty God the searcher of all hearts that you shall tell the testimony that you shall give shall be the truth, the whole truth, but the truth is usually answered to God the last great day. Well, that's not to see. I, I didn't have that in my heart, but he did. So I, I like that. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. And uh, isn't, it, isn't it something? Any old Western you ever saw? I mean, it's a little short in form in the old Westerns, you know. I, some of those old ones like hang them high, but they. They always had to put their hand on the Bible, and you've always heard, I swear it's the truth. I saw it, you know. I'll swear on a stack of Bibles. Well, why does the Bible enter into it? Because Jesus said, this is the truth. The gospel is the truth. There used to be an old song that they used to play. I was just a kid in the 60s, but the, the refrain from that song, you probably can still find it today. I don't know who sang it or anything about the title or anything. But it, was always, it always came back to the refrain, the lonely voice of youth cries, what is truth? You might have heard that before. It might be ringing some bells, but I heard it the other day on the oldies station in the tractor. What is the truth? What is the truth? Now I'm gonna take you to the land of milk and honey, okay? Now, listening to some of the, the stuff that I've listened to, it's amazing, and I'm not selling honey, no, nothing of the sort. I'm not connected with anybody that does. But it's amazing what honey can do, especially the raw honey can do, and how it connects with, with the Bible. It's, it's just amazing. And how milk connects with the Bible as the land of milk and honey. David's mighty men of valor um, ate curds and cheese and milk and honey for strength. It says right in here. You, I can't find it right here now. But I read it, and I know you can find it. I was, I was amazed, and I read it again. I do produce milk. Milk that's made into cheese and curds and any other thing that you might uh, want to talk about. If you're into the dairy business at all or connected, even if you're retired, um, through the years, 
it seems like uh, milk and, and dairy and, and all the kind of products have gotten a, a bad rap. But if you follow what's been going on, uh, it, maybe you've gone up the highway somewhere and you've seen these Bailey's bales with like 97 milk uh, on that. And it's all about the percentage of fat and all these different things. If you research that, you go to their website, you'll find out all these kind of things and activities that have been going on for a long time. And people are promoting farming in general and certainly focusing on the dairy aspect of it and how much people do not know in our time and our generation about how good food, some foods are for you. And certainly milk and honey uh, are, are some of the best. And as they get the response, the farm shine that I read it every week and most of that I think is fairly accurate. But it's just interesting how far they pulled the thing back towards center, away from the negativity uh, that has been wrapped, that's been giving to the dairy and the, and the cows and the milk and, and all that. And I've got a couple of little brown Swisses in the barn that would attest to that if you need some confirmation. Um, smile and want a scratch or two. But anytime we send out a pack of lies, whatever it is, and we can feed it, it's just like, setting a, a field ablaze, like one of these old overgrown fields now, as dry as it is, you throw a match or whatever, and away it'll go, and it'll spread. Many things that you were running through your mind, stories that were told, and suddenly you find out, well, that wasn't true at all. One of late, I think, probably was foremost in your mind right now. What is the truth? As Christians, as brothers and sisters, followers of Jesus Christ, the best way to attract people into the faith is to have people see with their eyes someone who tells the truth, okay? Now, everybody probably will say, well, we've, we've had to do this or that or the other thing, and we had to enter into a gray area to do this or that. I've heard all kinds of accounts, and there's the deliberate stuff that lands people uh, in jail or any other thing that might go along. But Jesus said, I am the way, and I am the truth, and the life. And you think about it for a minute, as I thought about it, leading up to this lesson. How people continue to run into dead ends, you know, lost uh, leads, all kinds of things, following this, following that. And it seems becoming more and more rampant as, as, the, as the time goes on. As I mentioned to Tammy coming in uh, to the door, um, you know, the salt of the earth, Jesus said. You are the salt of the earth. And if the salt is taken away, literally, literally all hell will break loose. I want you to think about that. It's right in the book of Revelation if you need to find it. It's in other places in the gospel too. You and I as followers of Jesus Christ are the salt of the earth, and the purveyors of the truth, or we should be. Don't you just like it when you know someone, when you connect with someone who you know has never varied at all, ever, in what they've told you? Now, if somebody says they'll do this or that or the other thing and something happens, like, you know, they can't, they're impeded for some reason for a while. But someone who has never really deliberately told you something with the idea to, to throw a snow job on you or to take advantage of you or to lie to you. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and the life. Now, let's go back to the Garden of Eden, book of Genesis, if you will. Done that before with you folks. Beautiful, perfect Garden of Eden. God said to the two that were there, don't eat of that tree there, because if you do, you're going to die. Pure and simple. It's not complicated at all. If you eat of that, you're going to die. It's like if you and I pour a, a bottle of antifreeze and somebody takes a drink of it and I said, don't drink it, you'll die, and you drink it, you're going to die. It's pretty simple. Don't do it. But they did it. Why did they do it? Stop and think about it a little bit. Why did they do it? Because there was one who had broke away from the kingdom of heaven. A third of the angels fell, and Lucifer dragged him to the decks. And he lied to the people in the Garden of Eden. Went here before. You say, I've heard that before. But it bears going at it again. No, you won't die, Eve. Just, just take a bite, you know? Now you can relate that to some things in your own life. How many times have people said to you, um, don't worry about that. Nothing will happen. 
when they have in their own mind some way to take advantage of you or know you're going to fall into a ditch or over a cliff or something's going to happen. We've all had it happen to us. I don't care how sharp we are, how good we are, somebody has told something like that. Told an untruth, it's blown into a bigger untruth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Lucifer was the father of all untruths and all lies. No, don't you. Don't you worry about that. Can't you just see that? Plus, he was good looking at the time. Now he's, and then he ended up being a snake crawling on the, on the ground. But they said he was a beautiful creature to behold, so he was very tempting. Don't you worry about it. He knew full well when Eve ate of that apple that they were going to be kicked out of the garden and they would die. The gospel story in a nutshell. All lies. But who comes to visit us? Jesus Christ, the third person of the Trinity. He comes down and he says, I'm going to straighten this out. I'm going to offer myself for you, no matter how old or young you are. And when I tell you, <coughs> it will be a true. And I'll never vary from it. And I'll tell you, as long as many years as I've known Christ as my Savior and dealt in God's word and, and all those things, I've never known him to tell me a story or tell me a fib or to tell me a lie. Never seen it. Oh, some things didn't turn out the way I wanted them to. But in the end, it's always for the better from what I've seen. And blessed in a greater way than I thought I would if I'd have went about it in my own direction. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one, no one comes to the Father by, but by me. As we look at the, the courtroom situation, I used to watch all those old shows. And one of my favorites was when I was a little kid. Um, Aaron Burr, uh, what was the name of that? It was, it was a courtroom thing. Uh, uh, what did they call that? Burgess. Yeah, there. Yep. And I used to watch that. I used to watch it and watch it. And it was always interesting for them to finally unravel the, the lies and get back to the thread and pull a thread and all of a sudden it came unraveled and they sit there. It doesn't always work that way in real life. I know that. But it was always fun to watch. And those old black and white shows on Grandpa and Grandma's big old set which reminds me of something, okay? They always had these big, huge TV sets with wooden ones. I mean, it took two men to lift the crazy things over. Huge. And it was a 25-inch screen, you know? But I can remember um, my grandfather had just bought an updated one. And it was a, one of the first colored ones. And it would bother, as you know. You know, first we had green faces and orange lips and yellow ears, and it would like that, you know? And so he took it back, and they said they would fix it, and they got it, and all I remember as a little kid, they kept telling him stories, untruths, if you will. And so he, uh, he and my dad slid the thing in the back of the cattle truck and delivered it, uh, this, this whole business and everybody associated with it is dead and gone now. Delivered it to Troy, and I, I rode with him, and I just kind of stood there. And uh, it was uh, Grandpa Jackson's Mount Pisgah we towed away to, to, to settle the untruth and bring justice to a situation. And it wasn't long before a new TV was delivered, and uh, I remember that worked fairly well. None of the early color TVs were great, if you ever remember back that far. But uh, it's still better than the clamp-on screen that some would, uh, would try to see. Uh, <coughs> top was blue and the bottom was green and everything else was in between just because you had to imagine what color it might be. Untruths. I can remember as a little boy an individual who uh, was a fast talker. My grandpa usually didn't fall for hardly anything because he was a good dealer. Well, this individual was going to paint the barn in the house and express all the paint and, and described it and it was, it was a fairly good deal so he bought into it. And the paint went on. It rained and it rained and it rained and it rained. Everything that was sprayed on the barn roof was down on the, uh, under the eaves. And I remember Grandpa just looking at it. And, and he was a great guy. He, was a, he could be 
funny and, and, and joker, and, but serious and everything. But uh, I remember Grandma saying, well, that was a bunny foolishly spent. You'll never see them again. Grandpa says, I think we can track them down. And he did. He found them. I don't know where they came from. But they came back, and he ordered them to use a specific paint from the hardware, you know, the hardware, and, and it was good paint. It stayed on for years and years and years and years and years. Untruths. I think you get the picture that there's so much out there. Uh, and is it accelerated today? I, I'm not sure, but it's certainly covered more today. We are more aware of everything that goes on around us and on around the world. But I'm telling you, if you want a, a real solid witness for Jesus Christ, as John says in his, his epistle, we need to be like him. And we need to be purveyors of the truth. Not offering a shoddy bill of goods and a horse with no teeth and <laughs> all these kind of things. <laughs> if you're going to sell an old car, and just tell them, you know. Uses a little oil, she wobbles above 60, you know. Few things wrong, but the radio works good. They might buy it, who knows? If they don't, you're still better off than if you lie about it. Simple examples, maybe yes. Hopefully they brought a smile or two to you. But Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life as I close. Maybe you're a businessman doing deals and you can pull things. I've seen stuff. I really have. Interesting bit of history before I close here. Looking through some papers that my grandma Jackson had up in the attic. We were trying to move around some stuff and some things that dad had. And and I, and I happened on a, a bill of sale. Um, nothing bad about it at all. Nothing. Just the opposite of what I've been talking about. And many of you might remember Ted Potter. He did uh, electrical work and stuff back then. I was just a wee little kid. So if you're, if you're younger than me, you're not going to remember him at all. But they added on a 40 by 50 addition to the barn in 1968. And it was a, it was a detailed bill where he installed all the electricity and a barn fan, materials and everything, labor and everything, for $125. It was some odd cents. It was an even dollar, or uneven dollar, not even cents. And at the bottom, he gave Grandpa a discount because the job went so well and was a little bit under his estimate. And it's all written right out there to see, and I just shook my head and I smiled. Of course, figures and, and things can't be compared to that day, uh, to this day, but the fact that it was done well and and some of those light fixtures are still in there. The, the switches are still working. Nothing fell down. It was just interesting that you can give that extra and still come out ahead and you're okay. And if nothing, if no, there's no other way to come out ahead, then the kingdom comes and we stand before the Almighty and he judges. Did you tell the truth back there? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. If you don't get anything else today as I close, just remember, this is truth. Okay? This is truth. No matter what the world says, the world is hungry for the truth. They really, truly are. They really are. And it's up to you and I as brothers and sisters in Christ to issue that truth. God calls us to do that. Shall we bow our heads for a word of prayer? Father, we do praise you. Again. For being able to look at your word, as you have spoken to us today, you have given us the truth, your word, infinite word. We can stand on it forever and ever and ever and ever. It doesn't get any better than that. Help us to always remember to look to you and also be a shining example of, of truth, trustworthiness in everything we deal with in this world today. And may many look at it and say, I don't know who those people are, but I want a part of it. And you have spoken to us through your word today and the call has gone out. Help us to let it to sink into our hearts and our minds and our souls as we go forward from this place. In Christ's name we pray, amen. 473 is the closing hymn, if you want to turn there in your hymnal, 473.